Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to take notice of the shirt that I have on. This is a special AFC shirt, and most of you guys should understand that this logo, this icon that I created, it says, when you date thugs, you date death. And I want you guys to remember that thug is not a skin color. It is not a race. Thug is an action. And I talk about the actions of these people, not only who hurt children, but people who hurt people in general. And in this case, I personally believe that this young woman's boyfriend is the cause of her disappearance and the cause of her death. There's a lot to unpack here. You guys have probably seen this story in the news. So if this is your first time hearing it here, cool. But this story has clearly made its rounds around the news. Okay, let's talk about this. Initially, she was missing, but the FBI confirmed on Tuesday that the remains found Sunday in an area in Wyoming's Bridger Teton National Forest. I could not say that word. They found the remains of 22 year old Gabby Petito. This young lady right here, bright smile, beautiful young lady. And her parents reported her missing more than a week earlier. The coroner's initial determination for Pepito's manner of death is homicide. So as you guys can see that on the screen, they confirmed that it was a homicide. What does that mean? That means this was not an accidental death. Her death was caused and her death was intentional. So there's gonna be a murder rap following this. So it is imperative. When we talk about if you see something, say something, we're gonna bring that back up here in just a little bit. But if you guys know where her boyfriend is, it is imperative that y'all find him because we need to get justice. I just don't like people to do messed up stuff to, to good people. And I think that this young girl was a good girl that just got caught up with a, with a horrible individual. Okay. Now she had been traveling with her boyfriend by the name of Brian Laundry, L A U N D R I E. This busted head fool that y'all see right here on my screen, who looks like he would probably rape some forest animals. He just, like, he looked creepy to me. Like, this looked like the type of dude, I, I don't know, I, let, me not, let me not go too far. But he looks really, really odd. Okay, I'll, I'll say that. But Brian Laundrie is, uh, was with her prior to her disappearance. Laundrie returned to the pair's Northport, Florida home earlier this month without her and refused to talk to authorities. His parents later told police that he had left home with a backpack on September the 14th. That was not that long ago. And local and federal authorities searched for Laundry in a Florida, in a Florida na uh, nature reserve, but said Tuesday, those efforts have yet to yield any answers. So here's what you guys need to know, and we're gonna give you a timeline. It's like I say, this story is really, really hard to follow. So I hope you guys will follow me. I hope you guys will hit that thumbs up, help share the stream and spread this story so that this girl's story can not only get heard, we can get justice and hopefully find her raggedy boyfriend, okay? June, 2021, Pepito and Laundry embark on a cross country trip according to Northport Police Chief Todd Garrison, who refers to Laundry as Pepito's fiance. Fiance is a very strong word. Now, just because somebody says that they want to marry you does not mean fiance. Dirty Laundry, I like that. Thank you, Storm. <laughs> Dirty Laundry. Just because somebody says that they, I want to marry you and I be, want to be with you for the rest of my life. That does not mean that you are their fiance. Just because you've been with somebody for a long time does not make you their fiance. Just because you live with someone does not make them your fiance. There are two key things. One of them being an engagement ring, which is one symbol, it's simply a symbol. The second thing is to put a date on it. And I don't know that most people even know that. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but those are usually two things that follow an actual engagement, a ring and a date. Let's keep going. They plan to travel in Petito's white Ford van to head 
to the West Coast and visit state and national parks across Western United States, Garrison says in a news briefing. She had been excited to share her journey with her family and on social and on other social media, she, he says. She maintained regular contact with her family members during her travels. However, her contact abruptly stopped around the end of August. It's very important. August the 12th, 2021, two days after my birthday. Moab, Utah police have an encounter with the couple on August the 12th where officers described them as having engaged in some sort of altercation. I can't really speculate what they might have been arguing over, but that's also a key sign that something might have been very, very wrong here. Although the two are described as getting into a physical fight following the argument, both male and female reported that they are in love and engaged to be married and desperately didn't wish to see anyone charged with a crime. At officer's suggestion, the couple separated for the night, which describes Petito as confused and emotional. After evaluating the totality of the circumstances, I do not believe the situation escalated to the level of domestic assault as much as that of a mental health crisis, according to Officer Daniel Robbins writes in the report. No charges were filed. And let me tell you guys this. I don't blame the police officers for this. The police officers were going off of what they both told them. They both gave their separate accounts of the story. And especially because she wanted them to say like, hey, look, I want y'all to just let this go. Let us work this out. And that's exactly what they did. So they had to, they had to go off a lot of what her word was, which could have proven to be fatal for her. The couple each had their own cell phones in case of emergency. In a 911 audio recording from that day, which was provided by Grand County Sheriff's Office, a caller tells dispatch that he wanted to report a domestic dispute and described a white van with a Florida license plate. Somebody saw something and said something. And I'm telling you guys, if you do that, then your hands are out of it. That's all you can do. If you see something wrong, you just report it to the police and that's it. You've done your job. Let's keep going. The caller said as they were driving by, the gentleman was slapping the girl. Ladies, do y'all hear me? I know we, we generally don't have, you know, teenage women, early age women in my chat. A lot of you guys are probably 25 and older in my chat. But if I do have some younger ladies out there, I do hope that they heed to this advice. Even one time of being hit by a man is too much. How many of y'all agree with what I just said? Even being hit one time by a man is too damn much. Just the, the, the thought, the idea of a man being aggressive with you should be a red flag, not even a yellow flag. Yep, a matter of fact, Keisha, and thank you for saying that. She said, the news said that he, some, somebody saw him slapping her on the side of the road. That, that, that alone should have stopped this entire thing dead in its tracks, no pun intended. Then we stopped, the caller ad. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. Wow. That is a huge red flag right there. Matter of fact, I think just the fact that this young lady ended up dead and they saw him slapping her, if they can ID him, that should be enough to get him a murder rap. What do y'all think about that? That should be enough right there in itself. That should be enough. And thank you for you guys. The chat is open. If you can't chat, just make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. It should allow you to be able to chat. I want to hear what you guys' thoughts are. If I'm saying something that's wrong, please let me know. When you guys come in, hit that thumbs up. It'll help share the stream and let more people know that we're live, okay? A man talking to you in an aggressive way is probably a red flag. A man threatening to hit you 
it's probably a red flag. A man grabbing your hand, grabbing your arm, grabbing your shirt, being physical with you. Matter of fact, I'm sorry, but real men in the chat know, right? Where are my fellas at in the chat? I know we got some real men in the chat that understand that this pussy on my screen is not a man. That's a thug, huh? Tell me if I'm saying something that's wrong. I don't want nobody to be in their feelings. I know we got some good men in the chat and I know we got some women that understand what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And that's totally inexcusable. P Petito's family told police that they were last in contact with her during the last week of August, Northport police said. Before that last communication, Petito is believed to have been in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming, according to police. In a news conference in September, Petito family attorney Richard Stafford says that the family's last communication with their daughter was August the 30th, not that long ago, less than 30 days ago. But they do not believe that the message they received was actually from her. That's very interesting. Because if he was abusive to her like that, what do y'all think the likelihood that this fool was probably all up and through her business? When they are abusive, when they are violent, when they are threatening, they usually are very, very controlling and nosy. He probably knew the password to her phone and knew how to get inside of her phone and probably sent a text message that probably wasn't from her. Stafford shares a timeline of events on September the 17th as the family knows it. So here we go. On, on August the 24th, Petito fa uh, FaceTimes with her mother and tells her she's leaving for Utah and heading to Teton Range in Wyoming. A day later, August 25th, there are multiple text messages between her and her mother. The young woman's family believes she is in, Tetons, in the Tetons on this date on August the 27th. There were more texts between her and her mother during which her family believes she remains in the Tetons. On August the 30th, her family receives their last text from her, but they doubt she wrote that text. According to Stafford, that message reads, no service in Yosemite. It's very suspicious. Also in September, a woman publicly claimed that she and her boyfriend gave laundry a ride on August the 29th in Wyoming and that laundry claimed he had been camping by himself for multiple days while Petito was at their van working on social media post. Do y'all think that's true? I think that's, I think that's bull crap. I think that should also get him a murder, a first degree murder charge. Because that can easily be proven that he was not doing what he said he was doing. Control freaks only get worse. You're 100% right. 100%. In a series of video posts on TikTok, Miranda Baker said she and her boyfriend picked up laundry that evening while he was hitchhiking in Coulter Bay. Why would he be hitchhiking? You, you see how that's, how that's wrong? Laundrie told them he had been camping at a site outside the Grand Teton National Park near the Snake River, she said. Once Laundrie found out Baker and her boyfriend were going to Jackson Hole instead of Jackson, he got agitated. Asked that the vehicle stop and he got out near the Jackson Dam, according to Baker. Hot temper, hot attitude. Baker says she spoke to law enforcement about the inter interaction. The Northport police confirmed to CNN that Baker spoke with the department before posting the videos on TikTok. Her account is plausible, it appears, according to Northport police spokesman Josh Taylor said. CNN has not been able to independently verify Baker's claims. September 1st, Laundrie returns to the couple's Northport home where his parents also live on September 1st, according to police. The white vehicle, Pepito, excuse me, I'm having trouble saying her name. Let me put some respect on this baby's name. Gabby Petito and Laundry had been traveling in, was later recovered by police at the home. It was processed and there was some material in there that authorities will be going through. Taylor, the police spokesman says at a news briefing. 
September the 11th, 9-11. Here's that, mark that date. After not being able to get in touch with her, her family who lives in New York reports her missing to the Suffolk County, New York Police Department. Northport authorities also go to Laundrie's home that night and ask to speak with him and his family, but we were essentially handed the information for their attorney, according to the spokesman. That's the extent of our conversation with them, according to Taylor. September 16th, five days later. In a letter read by Petito's family attorney during a news briefing by the police, the missing woman's family begs for Laundrie's family to help in the investigation. I'm going to tell y'all this. That's flat out disgusting. If their son killed this woman, which we believe he did, we're speculating until we get proof in court. But for now, that's what we believe because there's enough evidence to pin in our minds that this is probably what this little bastard did. Why would the family be protecting him? What kind of morals do they have? Y'all know I get on to people, especially when they ignore abuse and allow things to fester. Don't say anything about it. They don't step up and at least speak against the actions. I think that's messed up. And to me, it almost sounds like dirty laundry. Thank you. You said it again. Thank you. Dirty laundry. I think that's disgusting that the family won't be more proactive. That's, that's insane. They said, please, if you and your family have any decency left, please tell us where Gabby is located. Tell us if we are even looking in the right place. All we want is for Gabby to come home. Please help us make that happen. He says, Petito's family reached out to Landry's family earlier in the month for information on her whereabouts, but his family refused to answer. We have, been we have not been able to sleep or eat and our lives are falling apart. That's what the family said. Got a little bit more to tell here. A lot more to tell. We'll, we'll try to shorten it up a little bit. Several days after both Petito's family and the police pleading with Laundrie's family to cooperate with the police investigation, Laundrie's family requests that the police come to their home where they have, excuse me, where they share, they have been, they haven't seen Brian since September the 14th, we have been trying all week to talk to his family to, to talk to Brian. And now they've called us here on Friday. We've gone to the home and they're saying that they have not seen their son. It's another twist in this story. Sounds like they're harboring a fugitive. Help them get away. I think they should be investigated for that. That should be an arrestable offense. In my opinion, laundry family attorney, Stephen. Bertolino Bertolino family attorney Stephen Bertolino tells CNN the whereabouts of Brian Laundrie are currently unknown the FBI is currently at the Laundrie residence removing property to assist in locating Brian as of now the FBI is looking for both Gabby and Brian but of course we already found her this is a timeline they've already found her body September the 18th Northport police authorities are conducting a search for matter of fact. I, yeah. Okay. They're searching for laundry at the Carlton reserve, a natural area with more than 80 miles of hiking trails in Venice, Florida, roughly 50 law enforcement officers from five local agencies in the FBI are searching for laundry Taylor or excuse me yeah, for laundry Taylor. The police spokesman says at a news conference, adding that laundry has an enormous amount of pressure on him to provide answers as to what's going on. Meanwhile, the FBI announces the agency and its partners are conducting ground surveys in Grand Tet National Park that are relevant to Pepito's disappearance. The National Park is where Pepito is believed to have been, to, to have been before her last communication with her family. I'm sorry. They just put a lot of words to say very simple things. Sorry about that. On September the 19th, Human remains were discovered in Teton County, Wyoming, are consistent with the description of Petito, FBI officials say in a news conference. Full forensic identification has not been completed to confirm 100% that we found Gabby, but her family has been notified of this discovery. FBI Denver, uh, Denver's supervisory senior resident agent in Wyoming says, 
September the 20th. The parents of Brian Laundrie are questioned at their home by the FBI. Christopher and Roberta Laundrie are escorted from their home and returned after federal agents executed a search warrant, according to Taylor. Police say that they have exhausted search avenues at the Nature Reserve and the search area has been shifted. September 21st. The Teton County Coroner confirms the human remains found Sunday in Bridger Teton National Forest were those of Gabby Petito. It was her. The cause of death remains pending final autopsy results. Because I'm definitely curious to hear what that autopsy is going to turn up. But let me let you guys listen to the news videos because we got quite a few of those. Again, if you guys are listening, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Share the stream. Let more people hear their story and come find us here. Hit that thumbs up, okay? Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. I personally believe if they find out that that boy's parents are lying, I think they deserve at least five years in jail. What do y'all think about that? Lying to the FBI and the police? I think they were lying. If y'all disagree with something I'm saying, say it in the chat. You don't have to be disrespectful, but if you disagree, I don't mind y'all having a disagreement. Tell me in the chat what you think. Let's get it. We're continuing to follow the search for Brian Laundrie. It's been over a week since anyone has heard from him. Just yesterday, the investigation into his fiance, Gabby Petito, went from a missing persons case to a homicide. And now search crews are focusing their attention on this nature reserve in Venice. And that's where Fox 13's Kimberly Cuisan joins us live. So Kim, you've been following this story since day one. Walk us through what led investigators to the Carlton Reserve in the first place. Hi, Linda. Well, what led investigators to the Carlton Reserve was Brian Laundrie's parents. Now, keep in mind, on Friday night when they reported him, quote, missing, they told investigators that this was the area that Brian was coming to on Tuesday. They said that they saw him walk out of his house, out of their house with a backpack, supposedly jump into that Mustang and go to the Mayakahatchee entrance, which, which goes into the Carlton Reserve. So they're basing this search on tips from the parents at this point in time. So that silver Mustang that was towed away from the laundry home on Monday, uh, do we know why? Looking for clues, obviously, right? Obviously, that's a good answer right there. But that was also towed away as that FBI agents went up to their house executing the search warrant. Uh, now, the Mustang was towed away as evidence was also taken out. Talking with investigators, they're going to be looking at that Mustang, combing it over just as they are this reserve, looking for any evidence that may tell them where Brian went past, past when he left his house. Well, law enforcement has been searching this reserve for several days now, but, but this is the first time, I believe, that they've brought in a dive team. So do we know why they're taking this additional step? Yeah, Linda, well, this is the first time that we have seen that dive team go into the reserve. And we know that they have gone in there because the investigators say that they have searched a number of areas on land. They said that they're starting to exhaust their land search and they're going to look into the water to see if it contains any clues of Brian or Brian's belongings. Uh, that could also include the backpack if it ended up in there or anything that belonged in that backpack. But investigators are now honing in on that, just saying that they've been looking all over the land. They haven't been able to find anything at this point, but they continue to bring resources in here. Just a few minutes ago, we saw a Verizon signal truck coming in to help boost the signal of investigators that are back out there. So there's something in here that's continuing their search at this point in time. All right. And when is the next time that we could get an update from either the Northport, Northport Police or the FBI? Well, we have been hearing from the Northport Police Department. They have been answering our questions, but they haven't been holding any press conferences at this point in time. And they tell us that the next time that we will hear from them is when there's a significant development, either when Brian is found or something is found here in the reserve, or if they get any credible tips where Brian could be located. Like video, perhaps the media could share. So we'll wait and see. Kimberly Cuisan reporting live for us. You're doing a great job out there. Thank you. 
Well, remember, for updates on the case, just head over to fox13news.com. Our coverage on Brian Laundrie and Gabby Petito is right there on the homepage. Well, 22-year-old Gabby Petito's death has now ignited new interest in finding other missing persons. Her disappearance has actually mobilized people online hunting for clues to focus on other unsolved cases, including those of minorities that don't necessarily garner as much national attention. T.J. Holmes has more for us. Her story has dominated news headlines and mobilized a legion of social media users. Hashtag find Gabby Petito gaining over 700 million views on TikTok. Um, I'm hoping this can help someone identify him. Many of them now internet sleuths, exchanging theories as well as sharing info about possible sightings and clues. Psychologically, people just felt very close to her because of social media. But here's the despairing truth. Gabby Petito is one of so many reported missing each year. At the end of 2020, the FBI had over 89,000 active missing persons cases. 45% of those cases, people of color. Petito's story has renewed debate about which cases get attention and the media's seeming infatuation with missing white women. But her case also sparked a call to action to bring others home like Daniel Robinson, a 24-year-old geologist who went missing in the desert outside Buckeye, Arizona in late June. His Jeep was found mangled July 19th, about four miles from where he was last seen. The Buckeye Police Department says in a statement, investigators are utilizing every resource possible to locate him, including assistance from partner agencies and information provided by the public. I wanna pause right there. I kinda understand what where they're coming from with this to a certain extent. They're making it seem like the media is really just blowing this, this missing woman's story out of proportion and completely ignoring other races of people's story. Do y'all believe that that's the case? Because I'm gonna tell you guys something. Let, let's just be real about it. If white people dominate the population in America, of course, if something seems to be familiar to them, like, oh, maybe a young white girl, like most white women have experienced being a young white girl, right? They've experienced that. They have young white girls in their family. They have young little girls that are gonna grow up and become young white girls, right? So yes, the dominant people in society are probably going to share this story because this is what they can relate to. The same way that black folks, whenever it's time for us to talk about some George Floyd, let, let me get my names back up on the screen. We want to talk about some Ahmaud Aubrey. We want to talk about some Dante Wright, some Alton Sterling, some Walter L. Scott, some Rashard Brooks, some Breonna Taylor, some George Floyd, some Stephon Clark. Huh? We forced everybody to talk about those stories, did we not? All I'm saying is why can't we let people have their moment and it's an important moment. We're not saying that other missing people are not important. This one just was the one that caught their attention and their heart. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just like when I said with the go, thank you, justice for all races. Please somebody say that in the chat again. Thank you, Serenity. Justice for all races. We cannot sit here and act like the dominant society has not supported us because they have. Mexicans can't say that. Blacks can't say that. Asians can't say that. Natives cannot say that. None of us can. We all will have our time to be able to share our stories in the media. I think it's wrong when they try to make that seem like Oh, this is some type of, we're, we're, we're going to just ignore all these stories and sweep them under the rug on purpose. That's not what's going on. Sorry, I just don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. All of these stories are important. Or here's what we need to do. Get your own media. How about that? Make your own YouTube. Make your own social media. Every single day when, when we talking, when we talking about, uh, Trading and coding. How about y'all build some fucking apps? How about that? <laughs> build 
build your own media. If that's the case, get your own news studio. Go, if, if you're that mad about it, go talk to Oprah. Go talk to Tyler Perry. If you're that damn mad about it. I don't have a problem with this at all. If this is what the dominant society wants to put as being as important right here, right now, I'm all for it. Because we all have our time to tell our stories. We gotta share, we all here together. It's a big ass melting pot in America. We're constantly letting in immigrants and all type of stuff. Am I not a fair person? Somebody talk to me, please. Somebody say something. We're being fair. It's almost kind of like somebody telling me, well, why are you doing this story, Jay, with all of these kids out here that are missing? All of these kids that are being murdered. Look at it like this. 99.9% .9 of my videos are about children. So if I do one story that is something outside of that scope, wouldn't we be understanding? And that's all I'm asking the rest of the world to do is be a little bit more damn understanding because that's ridiculous. Let's listen to the rest of this. His family has also organized searches in the desert heat. I thank God for all the volunteers who left their houses every morning uh, in the mornings and, and spent out, um, time out there in the desert. There's also Maya Miliete and Jelani Day. Miliette, a mother of three, has been missing for over nine months. The 39-year-old was last seen at her family home in Chula Vista, California. Day, a 25-year-old graduate student at Illinois State University, was last seen August 24th in Bloomington, Illinois. His car was discovered two days later, but no signs of Day. Jelani is, um, he's a sweetheart. I shouldn't have to beg. I shouldn't have to plead. I shouldn't have to feel that <laughs> there is a racial disparity. I shouldn't have to feel anything about that. Oh my God. <gasps> Sister, you did not just say that. Oh, we about to get racial up in this. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. I need to turn a fan on. Oh, we about to get hot in here that goddamn day. Shit. Let's hear this again. Let's listen to her say this is a race thing. It's a race thing? Really? Is it really? Listen to her again. Try to make it seem like this is a racial disparity. Lord have mercy. Boy. Boy. Mm, 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 mm. Let's listen at this again. I shouldn't have to feel that <laughs> there is a racial disparity. I shouldn't have to feel any about that. Then don't. How about that? You know how the little white girl say, catch me outside? How about that? Huh? Perfect timing. Where is Black Lives Matter then, ma'am? It don't seem like Black Lives Matter got behind your case and pushed your message because if they did, then everybody would have heard about it. Would they not? Y'all know I, look, I hate to constantly keep throwing Black Lives Matter under the bus, but the wording of the, just the words Black Lives Matter bother me. Not the people, just the words. I know that there is trying to stand for something good, but the words are hippa fucking critical. If hashtag BLM would have got behind this woman's missing son's case, it would have been all over the media. Am I lying? Please somebody tell me if I'm saying something that is factually inaccurate. Please get out your feelings. You know, don't wet your diaper. Don't shit yourselves, okay? Don't pee your panties. Don't crap your boxers, please. Keep your underwear clean. Just tell me if I'm saying something that is factually inaccurate. That's just one entity. If just Black Lives Matter alone would have jumped behind this woman's case, he would have got the attention he needed. So maybe you need to ask Black Lives Matter, why doesn't your son's life matter when it comes to finding him? Very simple question. Rather than saying, it's a white thing. I, I shouldn't have to feel it's a disparity. It's a disparity. 
well, maybe we need to have some disparity for the 300,000 children who go missing each and every year. Huh? Huh? Maybe we need to have more disparity for children. I'm sorry, but that young man looks like he's a little bit bigger than a little child. He didn't look like a child. Let me back this up. Let me make sure I'm not wrong. I don't know how old he is. He looks like maybe he's a teenager, I guess. What's his name? July. He's 25 years. Lord have mercy. He's 25 years old. I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to tell you guys something. If you sent Jelani Day's story to me and I had to choose between his story and a child's story, there's a good chance that I would have passed up on his story. And I'm black. Simply because he's not a child. Not because he's black. Because he's not a child. He's 25 years old. I just don't understand how men can go missing. I know it happens. I know you can get kidnapped by gun force or if you're in gangs or whatever the case is. I get that. I, maybe, maybe behind some debt. I can understand that. But I just don't see men as being just flat out helpless like that. Men are usually going to be more physically imposing than women. Can I get an amen on that at least? At 25 years old, most men are usually at their peak for height, for weight, and strength. Tell me I'm lying. I could leg press 900, well, not 900, what was it like? Yeah, about 900 pounds coming out of high school. I'm not real big up top, but I'm very strong in the legs. I've always been very leg strong. You know how they say in the nutty professor, I'm not no easy win, nickel. You have a hell of a time trying to kidnap my black ass. 25 years old? At 25 years old, I could run a 6.4 in the 40. What you gonna do? You gonna chase me down, run a 6'4? Six, six 250 pounds? 6 foot 2? It's gonna take a good 8 to 10 people to stop me. I'm not saying that's his story. Please understand what I'm saying. All I'm saying is these are some elements that go into why some stories get overlooked. It happens to everybody. Please tell me there is not a white, another white woman who's missing. Her story didn't go untouched. Please tell me there's not a little kid story that didn't go untouched that's missing. Please tell me there's not a Latin story. A middle, a middle American story. Middle American, middle, middle Eastern story, excuse me. Tell me there's not an Asian story. We just talked about, let me, let me, let me back this up. This woman right here, Maya Millet, for almost 40 freaking years old, and they say that she's missing and she's middle aged. Everybody's story gets missed. When there is a headline in the media, that means everybody behind that is getting missed, getting less attention because of this one story. That's all I'm saying. We need to stop making this into a black and white thing. That's freaking stupid. A 25 year old graduate student at Illinois State University was last seen August 24th in Bloom. A anybody who disagrees with what I just said is going to end up causing a race war. I'm telling you now. Bloomington, Illinois. His car was discovered two days later, but no signs of day. Jelani is, um, he's a sweetheart. I shouldn't have to beg. I shouldn't have to plead. I shouldn't have to feel that <laughs> there is a racial disparity. I shouldn't have to feel any about that. I want these people that have these resources to realize this could, this could happen to them. <laughs> oh my God. 
So you're saying, so what she's saying, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm an asshole. I got to say this. I got to say this. So what she's saying is these whole white people are overlooking her black story, but you're using white media and disparaging white people in the media that mostly white people watch and you want them to help you after you just said that they're ignoring you? Huh. Isn't that kind of similar to biting the hand that feeds you perpetually? We continue to keep doing this. That's insane. Commander Chief Legal Analyst Dan Abrams. So Dan, this is now a murder investigation. How does that change things? Um, it really changes things less for him and more for the people around him. Um, and that's because they want to find, him, period. They are now devoting all the resources as if there was an arrest warrant out for him. But there's still not officially an arrest warrant. Why not? You know, look, I think that they want to gather all the evidence so that they don't get accused at a trial later of making mistakes. But we were talking a lot yesterday about the obligations of the parents. This could change the obligations right. for the parents. So suddenly, if he's a fugitive from justice, right now he's still just a person of interest. That just means they want to find him, right? The minute that arrest warrant comes down, then anyone who harbors him, anyone who helps him evade justice, etc., now they're committing a crime. And that's the legal line that has to be crossed. That the minute that warrant is issued, now you assist, you help, you're harboring and as a fugitive. You said yesterday, if the parents sent the investigators off in the wrong direction, that's a problem. Absolutely. I mean, we, we were just talking about this. If that park was a false flag, if that's actually there was you know, not a car there and that's not where they found it and that was all made up, parents could absolutely uh, be in legal trouble for that. What does it mean that there was no ruling on the cause of death? Um, it just means that they want to take a few more minutes, meaning homicide means death at the hands of another. She was murdered, period. Uh, now the question is going to be exactly what was the cause. Again, they just want to dot the I's and cross the T's on this. So w if and when there's a trial, they don't say, well, you know, you initially said that it was uh, this, and yet you slightly changed it once you had more evidence. So I think... And I think that's important because you got to remember that what they're trying to do is they're trying to make sure and capture a solid case. Because if you're going to charge somebody with first degree murder, you got to get your ducks in a row because there's too many people out there that can get off a of murder because of little technical details. So I, I don't mind if they're going to do the case, just do it right. So I'm all, I'm all for that. A couple more videos and then we'll get to our next set of stories. Breaking news tonight, the FBI says the human remains found in Wyoming Sunday are missing 22-year-old Gabby Petito, the coroner, saying that her manner of death was a homicide. Meanwhile, the search back on today for her fiancé, Brian Laundrie, considered a person of interest in this case. Let's get out to NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard, who is in Venice, Florida. Vaughn, those autopsy results just coming in. What can you tell us? Yeah, just here in the last 12 minutes is when this autopsy report here uh, from Teton County Coroner uh, was just released by the FBI. And it was determined by the coroner that the initial determination for the manner of death is homicide. The cause of death remains pending final autopsy results. But here's the other part that is, I think, important to note, and that is from special agent in charge Michael Schneider who says this is particularly as it remains to Brian Laundrie, the fiance in this case, says that Mr. Brian Laundrie has been named a person of interest. Anyone with information concerning Mr. Laundrie's role in this matter or his current whereabouts should contact the FBI. Again, and again, I think the family might have helped him try to get away. I just think that's real messed up. His dad is a retired DA. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? His dad is a retired DA, no freaking way. Oh my goodness. But you know what? That makes, uh, that makes sense, Keisha. They might actually be trying to, to get this boy off in a legal capacity. That's wild. That's wild. I, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but if you're telling me that, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. That's wild. Nancy, you were always doing something new. 
and it's always something interesting. So let me just start off saying congratulations on The Good Father, the Martin McNeil story, and I'm very curious, with all the true crime out there, what drew you to this story, and why did you want to produce this film? Look, even if he is connected like that, they could get him off, but this is also where your morality has to kick in. Let me say that word again, because I don't say it enough. That's when your morality, your moral compass needs to kick in. If it were my own child that was accused of doing something heinous, I'm not about to try to get my child off. The point is, is to do the best you can to try to raise your kids not to be damn demons. Huh? Got to raise your kids not to be damn demons and pray and hope that they don't do something stupid. But, but don't ask me to help cover up your stupidity. But this is why it's important to make good choices in life and not do stuff like this. I, I damn sure it wouldn't be just because I got connections be using it to, to, to hide my kid behind the legal shield. I don't like that. It had very little to do with doctor. Doctor, <laughs> including Martin McNeil, although he turned out to be a fascinating character except he's real but what really drew me to the case was michelle mcneil mm. oh dear lord if i could just be half the mother that she was just this genuine wonderful person this movie is told through the eyes of alexis mm. i don't think we would have ever found the truth because alexis would not give up she did not believe her mother died naturally and what was so disturbing about that aspect of the truth and the movie is that Alexis revered her father, Dr. Martin McNeil. She even went to medical school, greatly influenced by him. And then to find out that uh, in the end, you suspect your father, yeah. that you look up to of murdering your mother, awful. But Michelle, is the one that, that captivated me first. When and where can we see this film? The Good Father. Let me let me skip past that. I'm not sure if they're talking specifically about this. Chef, after those human remains were discovered here yesterday, the FBI brought in more resources to begin processing that area for evidence. They've continued those efforts today, and the road to the campsite behind me remains closed. On Sunday, helicopter video captured investigators setting up a canopy tent in that area during their search. Teams on horseback were also brought in to cover more ground. By the afternoon, the Teton County coroner arrived in a white truck, and a short time later, they confirmed that those human remains had been discovered. The FBI announced that even though the remains match Gabby's description, they still have to complete a forensic identification. We're told the autopsy will take place sometime tomorrow. No cause of death has been determined at this time. Finding the remains was in part thanks to the public. They called in tips, as you just mentioned, a couple that had spotted that white van in this area called to let the FBI know. And that is when the FBI began to concentrate their search efforts on this campsite. Shep. But first, a newly released document reveals the fight a witness saw between Gabby Petito and her fiance. We certainly thank you for joining us at 11 o'clock. I'm David Ushery. Natalie is off tonight. What for the last 10 days has been a missing person case is now a homicide investigation. After the FBI confirmed the body found in Wyoming is 22-year-old Gabby Petito. The confirmation of her death comes exactly one week after family members last spoke to her fiancé, Brian Laundrie, four days after police searched Laundrie's Northport, Florida home, and two days after investigators discovered Gabby's remains. At the same time, the search for Laundrie continued today in a Florida nature Preserve, roughly 2,300 miles from the campground where police found Gabby's body. We've got team coverage in both locations. News Force Paisy Chang has covered this story in three different states. She comes to us live tonight in Northport, Florida. <laughs> Paisy. Well, David, now that Brian Laundrie is considered a person of interest in an FBI homicide investigation, well, the search for that missing person has now turned into a search for a man on the run. 
Tonight, new details of a fight between Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie in Moab, Utah, back on August 12th that prompted people to call police. A witness states it appeared that he didn't want her in the white van. He got into the driver's seat and she followed him. At one point, she was punching him in the arm and or face and trying to get into the van. These details are a stark contrast to their picture-perfect relationship on social media. Something happened on their cross-country trip that led to Gabby's body being found in the Wyoming wilderness. I feel so bad for our family and it's just sad. And now he's missing. When you come back and you don't speak to anyone, it kind of gives it a bad vibe. From the outset, so many more questions than answers. Gabby no longer had a voice, while Brian and his parents refused to use theirs. The FBI tweeted that Brian Laundrie is a person of interest. Anyone with information concerning Mr. Laundrie's role in this matter or his current whereabouts should contact the FBI. That changes things considerably. Former prosecutor Alfredo Garcia believes the search for Brian will now be ramped up. You don't no longer have a suspect in a missing persons case, but rather now you have a suspect in, in homicide. Since Friday, police in Florida have been searching the vast Carlton Reserve for any sign of Brian. His parents told police he went hiking there last Tuesday, and they hadn't heard from him since. Terrain is very difficult. Um, essentially, 75% of it's underwater. We're expecting to get, uh, to get wet by the end of the day and check the entire area for Brian Landry. Dozens of officers enter the nature preserve in all-terrain vehicles. Inside, they use canines and drones to search the area. Video from a water boat on the outskirts of the Carlton Reserve shows just how dense the area is, but police concluded their search tonight without finding much. And when asked if the Laundry family had a statement in regards to the fact that Gabby died by homicide, their attorney responded by saying, may Gabby rest in peace. Now, Ooh, we, I'm, I'm gonna let the rest of this play. For more in this story, we're going to turn to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where my colleague Sarah Wallace has more on the investigation into Gabby Petito's death. The they, they were literally saying all the right things. You can clearly tell they had a lot of training when it comes to those to those parents, man. And that's really why this stinks even worse. Coroner's findings are what many suspected. Gabby Petito died here in Wyoming at the hands of another. The cause of death, in other words, exactly how she was killed, has not yet been determined. But that also will be critical as this case moves into the next sad chapter. This is the gravel road leading to an isolated campsite in the Wyoming wilderness where visitors say they saw a white van in late August. But here it is on the left. And I slowed it down so you can possibly see it a little bit better. A couple, Jen and Kyle Bethune, camping with their children, posted this video on social media saying when they heard about Gabby Petito's disappearance and saw pictures of the van she and her fiance had been traveling in, they thought it was time to call the FBI. We were heading back on this long dirt gravel road. And we came across a white van that had Florida plates, a small white van. We were going to stop and say hi because we're from Florida too, but the van was completely dark. There was nobody there. The FBI hasn't said specifically what brought them this past weekend to search the location with other law enforcement teams. But we now know on Sunday they found a body matching Gabby's description. Today, we spotted orange markers all over the rocks, hundreds of yards away from the nearest parking area, the same one where the YouTube couple spotted the van. You can understand why the search was so challenging. This is a remote part of Bridger Teton National Forest, and you have to- That woman gonna break her ankles is, sorry, she's a little bit older. I wouldn't have her out there walking on them rocks, but I hope she got some good insurance to cross Spread Creek to get here. It is very deep in some places. The question, who left this stone cross along the banks of the creek and when? There are virtually no footprints in the sand. People hearing this tragic story are beginning to come and pay their respects. This couple had noticed the area cordoned off on Monday, not realizing until now what it meant. We've got three, three daughters of our own. And it's tough. My heart just aches for their parents. Just was sad. We wanted to, you know, 
You'd want, you'd, if it was my daughter, I'd want people to come. It's not yet clear when Gabby's body will be released, but her family has said they will have no further comment until she is back home on Long Island. From Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Sarah Wallace, News 4 New York. Let me wrap this up by saying this. First and foremost, Gabby P Petito. I don't know what would have prompted this man or made him feel like he needed to do what we believe he did, but they have eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses to the arguments and this woman being slapped, like somebody actually saw her being slapped and beat up. I don't understand how that's not a huge smoking red flag right there. He needs to be caught. And like I say, man, I believe in my personal opinion that his parents are helping him hide. They probably have a, a fund of money probably prepared for his, uh, they already got an attorney for him. They got private counsel and that is their right to do that. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't not have private counsel for him, <clears throat> but the fact that they are, that they are able to know the system to be able to know how to navigate around the system. It just sucks because we want to get justice against anybody, against any criminals, against any thugs. And his behavior in this case, based on what we understand, is thuggish behavior. Again, thug is not a skin color, it's an action. And the actions of him beating up this woman and all of that type of stuff and I want to remind my ladies out there, especially if you have children, if they're young girls dating teenage years, or if I have some young women in the chat, how a man talks to you, how controlling a man is, how a man treats you, if he's ever disrespectful to you, these are all things that are red flags. And if that man is ever, ever physically aggressive with you in any shape, form or fashion, that is your red flag immediately to leave and exit that situation. Matter of fact, we could also be even more careful by simply doing a background check. I don't know if that boy has a background. Maybe he doesn't, but we would at least know if we did our due diligence and do a background check before we decide to go on long camping trips across America with somebody that you might not know that well. Get some references. Who were your last girlfriends? I want to talk to them. Something. But we just have to be more diligent about who we engage in relationships and sex with. We have to be more careful. And again, to this young lady, Gabby RIP. We hope to get justice in this story. And I thank y'all for listening with an open mind and an open heart to this story. Thank you.